How many times a week should I squat? Should I back squat or front squat? How many sets and reps should I do? What weight or percentage of my one rep max should I use? These are very valid questions to ask if you're interested in building your squat strength in your program. However, if anyone answers these questions without starting their answer with, well, it depends, they're doing you a disservice because only a Sith deals in absolutes. First, I'll direct you to arguably one of the best set of videos on programming I've ever seen, and that is the Scientific Principles of Strength Training. These videos were produced by Juggernaut Training Systems and are based off the book by Chad Wesley Smith, Dr. Mike Isratel, and Dr. Mike Hoffman. If you're a weightlifter, you should separate your training into two distinct periods, an off-season and a competition prep slash competition season. There are different periods within those, however, for the sake of this video, we are just going to keep it simple. It's common in the off-season, after a potential detraining or general physical preparedness phase, to focus on strength, specifically squat strength. This means that much of one's adaptive capabilities will be used in driving this particular aspect up. The best way to understand adaptation is the principle described in the aforementioned series as stimulus recovery and adaptation, or SRA for short. Everything we do that causes adaptation will have a recovery cost. When you learn to play the guitar, your fret hand fingers will hurt from the strings at the time of practice. Maybe they continue to be tender a day later, then you come back and they hurt a little bit less. Similarly, we have the SRA with the squats. The big factor that would determine SRA at the start is fitness. Essentially, your fitness at this point is just the ability to manage stressors with or without adaptation. The best way to test someone's current fitness specific to the back squat is to simply have them back squat and find their one rep max. Keep in mind though, the safe way of doing this with an inexperienced lifter is to have the lifter perform a perfect squat and then build load until the rep is slightly less than perfect. Let's say we have two lifters, an experienced one and an inexperienced one. For the sake of this video, we'll say that the experienced one is coming off of a period of detraining or a general physical preparedness phase. Simply put, the experienced lifter is not at their peak strength. Let's say on their first workout after determining their one rep maxes, they have five singles at 90% of their one rep max. This is not a typical first workout, but again, it's for the video. This will induce a different SRA between the two lifters. And this is because the experienced lifter is closer to their potential strength than the inexperienced lifter. The new gains of the inexperienced lifter will allow them to have a higher potential one rep max even after just one session. However, the experienced one will need more of a prolonged cycle to push adaptation. Fitness is just one variable in the incredibly massive multivariate aspect of SRA. Age, training age, gender, height, limb length, muscle fiber makeup, bone structure, <sighs> sleep, nutrition, recovery, hydration, stress, contraindications, general physical preparedness, and many, many more things factor into the optimal program. Like I said, only Sith deal in absolutes. Now that I did a great job of sending you into a panic, let me try to talk you off the proverbial ledge by offering my anecdotes with squat programming as a weightlifting coach and as a weightlifter myself. In our off-season, I like to program stimulative days and non-stimulative days. If the goal is to increase squat strength, those stimulative days will be focused on creating SRA with the squats. In my latest program, these stimulative days lie on Monday and Thursday. We are weightlifters, so I find ways to practice the snatch and the clean and jerk and their variants without inducing excess fatigue resulting in overtraining. Day one of this squat program calls for 80% relative lifts. This simply means that we will be using working percentages off the respective reps within a set. For the sets of five, we'll do two sets at 80% of our five rep max. And for the sets of three, we'll do two sets at 80% of our three rep max. Instead of working off of actual five and three rep maxes, we use a rep max chart to determine what those weights are. That is what gives us our actual percentage or just percentage of our one rep max. This program, as with many programs, are based off of increasing relative intensity or volume or both. As you can see in the next session, I didn't increase intensity, I only increased the amount of sets, i.e. volume. However, the following week, I increased relative intensity. 
For more on relative intensity and similar concepts, check out my series on maximum strength. Here's the tricky part. Depending on the individual characteristics of the lifter, SRA from these intensities will be different. Enter RPE, or rate of perceived exhaustion. Instead of relying on a set pattern of increase of relative intensities, I can use RPE to get the stimulus I want. Instead of 90% relative, I could say just do a set at RPE 8. It all depends on what I, as the creator of the program, want for that day. Well, now I guess it's time for me to put on my influencer hat and tell you that I have this squat program, as well as many other programs on my Patreon, for $1 a month. If you're wondering how to make a program or what you should do, just try something. You know why? Because you have time. There's no need to rush and find the best and fastest way to get the highest results. That mindset is only going to lead you to disappointment. Anyways, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.